Yes now, bless now. There's Rocksteady signing in. I'm in my work gear, people, so if you're thinking, what the hell is he wearing? I've got to keep myself warm, all right? Yeah, I'm going to talk about a record today. I'm going to use this channel to talk about records and talk about music, predominantly in the alternate field, so punk adjacent and metal adjacent music. Yo, I've, 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 I've been deep within punk rock music, hardcore music, for a minute. Metal music. I came up through thrash metal, death metal. Got into like all of the extremities. You got your gore grind and your groove and your, you know. Never, never really got into black metal too much, but you know what I mean. I like, I like my extreme music now. I never checked this band out purely because it was titled with Oi, and from what I was aware, Oi music was just a little bit out. I don't know, it was a bit outdated to me, it was for the old heads, you know, I came up with a bunch of skins and all this and that, but they were all into hardcore punk music and so forth, and the hardcore punk adjacent oi sort of bands, I felt I felt it watered down the music a little bit, but I gave this band a go, yeah, because I heard of a little song called England Belongs To Me, and I seen a little bit of live footage and I thought, you know what, that, that that's a great sing-along tune. That's great, that's anthemic. I do a reaction channel, a commentary channel I call it, as to where I discuss and engage over new music with um, people who are already fans of the music and it's a great way for me to listen to music once again. Because, man, I'm a I'm a bloody adult now. I'm, I, can't, I can't go around listening to music to the same extent I used to whilst I was a kid to a teenager to a, to a young man. I mean, I'm ancient now, so I use this channel as a way to get him back into that regressive state of enjoying and submerging myself within new music. And, uh, dude, I thought I'd check this band out. Cock Sparrow. Now, to my dismay, it's not the first album, because I tend to go from the first album and I listen to the discography in order. Some I've been doing on that channel. I'll link it down in the description, yeah? But I assume this was the first record. Shock Troops, it's entitled. Um, Spotify tells me it was put out in 1982. The band itself, Cock Sparrow, had been going on for a minute. Um... Some commenters are saying that this band predates the Ramones and essentially established the foundation of what was to come for our music. Now, I listened to this record, yeah, and I'll tell you what, honestly, I swear to God, this album, and I won't say this band, because I actually did listen to the album afterwards, um, Running Riot, 80 Summer, I think it was called. That 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 didn't tickle my pickle like this record did. Shock Troops, Shock Troops. The writing on this record is impeccable. Okay, and it it single handedly got me into listening to more skinhead music, some more working class music, some more oi music, because it was I was blown away by the songwriting, the melodies, the punk rock aspect of the songwriting, lyricism, and you know, the music, although you could potentially say they're a bit more of a rock and roll band, but they do have a tempo and an energy to them, as far as the instrumental goes. And dude, I was absolutely blown away. I've been annoying a lot of people in my personal life, because I've just been singing these songs weeks to months after initially hearing the record. On this reaction channel I do... I'll listen to the album and then I won't really listen to it again. You know what I mean? I'll listen to these bands once and then think, right, all right, cool. But this record, Shock Troops by Coxmara, I've I've put back on and back on and back on and back on. Dude, I'll tell you what, the very first tune on it, um, Where Are They Now? I think that's the title of the tune, isn't it? I'd give that a 5 out of 10. Personally, I wasn't around during the time, so the historical context referenced in that song doesn't really apply itself uh, too well to, you know, me and who I am as a human. So lyrically speaking, it doesn't connect that much. Um, melodically, pretty good, but it's nothing compared to the songs that follow. Wow. Wow. 
What's what's track number two? It take them all. Is that what they call it? Don't get me wrong. I don't know the songs and the lyrics inside the note, right? But I am firm in my belief that this is. I'm not even going to say quite potentially. This is one of the best punk adjacent bands I've ever ever heard in my entire life. One of the best records I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Take them all, take them all, put the backs against the wall and shoot them. Like, that is so blunt, whilst accompanied with such an upbeat, sing-along, hooligan melody. Incredible. Working. I've been working all that for my lane on the side, running around like a blue-ass fly. I've been working, I've been working all day for me, mate. Yo, it was, it was put out in the 80s, but me in the 2020s can relate heavy. To these tunes, yeah? Working for your mate on the side to make a little bit of cash in hand money. Signing on in the dole. Pulling the wool over their eyes. Call me a liar, call me a... What is it? Call me a liar, call me bent. But I need some more than food and rent. I've been working. I've been working. <laughs> the benefit boys don't know too much. The benefit boys... Are out of touch. What they don't know won't hurt them much. I've been working. I've been working. So good. Instrumentally speaking. I mean. I'm just emphasising on the lyricism. The literal songwriting is out of this world. Uh, to the point where I was curious as to whether there was co-writers on this record. Because the way it was structured out in pop structure. Was spot on. There's a template being used, there's a formula being used in this music, and as far as punk rock music goes, it is absolutely mind-blowing that this is actually being applied successfully, because you rarely get this. Man, instrumentally, high energy, high octane, we don't really reel down the pressure on that instrumental, aside from one tune, which I think is amazing, and that is um, Out on an Island, speaking on... Individuals get drafted for war, but you're not gonna get me. I'm 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 out on an island. I've gone. I've dipped. You know what I mean? Incredible stories of honest working class men, boys to men, who are getting by, grafting, doing what they have to do, into their rock and roll, into having an argy bargy. Let's put it on a record and essentially write the best record that. I have ever heard the one of the more relatable and catchy records. I mean, the hooks on this record are second to none. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Instrumentally, the guitars, you'll have three chords in a song. And they won't even blast through them chords. They'll hang on to that chord for like a minute, man. And then back two chords back and forth like that. And then the lyrical melody will just float atop it, creating incredible substance. The drummer just drives. What? I'm not a drummer, but you know where I'm coming from, just driving it from A to B. No fruity fills, no excessive nonsense. There is no excess on this record. It's all direct, concentrated power. And I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I mean, what more can I say? I would really recommend this record to anyone getting into punk rock music. Um, it's not, you know... Some may argue it's not punk music. Of course it's punk music, but it's not, you know, boxed up and categorised as punk music. It's rock and roll music, it's oi music, it's skinhead music, you know? But to me, it's most definitely under the umbrella of punk rock. It's got the attitude. And that attitude is second to none. Um, vocally, the vocals are really unique and really brilliant and really honest. There's no imitation going on there. Bassist doesn't get up to too much, just sort of follows follows the riffs, but that's all that's necessary. Guitar solos on this record are really good. They're tasteful, they're well phrased, they are catchy and really contribute to the music in a positive way. There's no egocentric 
noodling and wanking around on the guitar. That's absolutely brilliant. There's a sufficient amount of material. I do feel that the quality of the record, in my opinion, sort of dies down in the second half. But you do have Out on an Island, England Belongs to Me, which is, uh, from what I'm aware, their, their most famous tune. Even though there's a lot of great tunes. And, yeah, that's what I believe. That Hands down, you know, I've listened to a lot of music, so it's uncomfortable for me to say it's in the top five punk rock records I've ever heard in my entire life, but... I'll say it, I'll say it, I'll say it. I've, I mean, there's no stern, stone left unturned for me as far as bands that have reached the surface and are present. I mean, if I want to find new stuff, I have to look at local bands from the middle of nowhere to really, you know, find new quality stuff that is making a movement. But that was brilliant. Really, really good, really good. Made, made me want to go out and check out the Foreskins, made me want to check out um, Cockney Rejects, Angelic Upstarts. Like, it invited me to open a gateway as to which I had always avoided because I sort of considered it a bit bland, a bit boring. I realised it wasn't. And that's me signing out. Up the skins, up the...